Starbucks is just basically saying, you know, oh yeah, Daddy Schultz. Yeah, we're, we'll do exactly what you want us to do. And we will participate in your public pressure campaign against your employees. Starbucks is continuing its union busting campaign, now tacitly enlisting the help of right wing propagandists who are all too happy to set aside their differences with the ostensibly woke company, as long as it means hurting working people. Imagine that. Yeah. Prior to this week, they have been pretty flagrant in their violations of the law and so shameless as to use the overturning of Roe versus Wade and the imposition of religious folks, of of fundamentalist religious folks' ideas onto the bodies of everybody. They've been so shameless as to use this to scare workers into not unionizing by offering abortion care to all workers except ones in unionized stores in clear violation of the law. That is obviously not legal, but they did it anyway. It also just doesn't make sense because they're telling the workers, you know, we can give it to the non-union stores, but for a union store, oh, we'll have to negotiate it, which, of course, is not true. Right. It could just be a company-wide benefit that doesn't have to be negotiated, whether you have a contract or not. Uh, it's asinine. It's a flagrant violation of the law. And it's um, just more bad faith, more bad faith and more union busting from Starbucks. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, last week, though, they unleashed their latest attack, more store closures. What's unique about this round of 16 store closures, though, is that they are blaming it on, quote unquote, crime. Using this as a justification is irresistible to right wing weirdos who want to pretend that we have defunded the police. We haven't. Or, in fact, that we they want to pretend that we have done anything other than perform fellatio on cops and give them more and more money. And of course, we haven't done anything other than perform fellatio on cops and give them more and more money. And of course, this was no accident by Starbucks. It was no accident to pretend that they are closing these stores because of crime. And they had the gall to actually, in fact, pretend that this is, uh, that this is a partner-oriented closure, that they are doing this to address partner concerns and implying that this is what the workers at these stores would have wanted is for their jobs to be, (laughs) is to not have their jobs anymore, is to close the stores that they work in. Uh, So the freaks at the Daily Wire saw the bat signal and went right to work, pushing the narrative for the boss. And despite no supporting evidence being provided by Starbucks that the crime made these stores unprofitable or that this is what the workers themselves wanted, they ran an article titled Starbucks Closes Multiple Coffee Shops in Democrat-Run Cities. They cited the president of a council of bosses in Philadelphia about crime, though, even though The Daily Wire did not take the opportunity to talk to a worker, if you can believe it. They just took what the bosses said at face value. That, okay, yeah, they're saying that they're closing these stores because of crime. That must be why. There could be no other reason for this (laughs) other than, you know, the highest profile union campaign in half a century. Probably nothing to do with closing 16 stores, including multiple unionized locations and one where there was a union election ongoing. Probably nothing to do with that. Oh, pure coincidence, I'm sure. Totally coincidental. Totally coincidental. Um, And then Schultz got even more explicit in his implicit cry for right-wing propagandists to come to his aid as he blasted quote-unquote governments – for not fighting crime. And again, Ben Shapiro's lackeys were more than happy to tow the boss's line. We're more than happy to tow the boss's line on this one. It is, uh, I mean, it's just, and, and they ran another article. 
And I, I 100% agree with you, Jacob. This, I think this was intentional. Uh, this line of you know discussion about crime, I think that they put this out there knowing this is catnip to the far right media media ecosystem, mm-hmm. and this allows them to partner with right. the Ben Shapiro's of the world in their union busting activities. Right. It it I mean it's enlisting these people in the public campaign against their own workers and this is an ostensibly progressive company this is somebody who previously ran for the democratic nomination for president this is somebody who was previously said to be the democratic appointee for hillary clinton's administration should she have won in 2016 for the department of labor this is somebody who is ostensibly a progressive democrat type person but here he is enlisting right-wing Koch brother funded reactionary propaganda in his war against his workers by doing this, by attacking Democrats, by pretending that this is about crime, by offering absolutely no supporting evidence that these stores are unprofitable or that this is what the workers there wanted. Just by saying crime and just by attacking Democrats, they've gotten these people to do what they want. Uh, But surprisingly, when you talk to workers, they got a different take on their shop site being shut down, if you can believe it. Rather than believing it is for their safety or being done on their behalf, the baristas that in these times spoke to were surprised by the closures. They were upset, and they said that they were bargaining for fixes that would prevent the necessity of closing stores. In These Times is a magazine that does a lot of labor reporting that reports on a lot of these stories, and uh, they did actually take the time to talk to baristas to see what they had to think about these store closures. Unlike the Daily Wire, who is much like any of these other right-wing propaganda outlets, they like to pretend that they are giving you the news in an unbiased way outside of their opinion section. They're giving you the news in an unbiased way that they are just giving you the facts And they're letting you decide what the narrative is. But here, clearly, clearly, they're pushing Howard Schultz's narrative. Even though, even though Howard Schultz uh, is woke, even though this is somebody, this is a company that they have gone on many a tirade about for them having, having the gall to have red coffee cups during Christmas. (laughs) uh it's amazing it's really amazing but uh but you know as long as as long as they can hurt workers then they're fine with it this seems so obvious to me that this is what starbucks was doing and and it and it is almost a little bit surprising that they're not um that they're not running with what the actual people on the ground would be saying just as a sort of schadenfreude kind of thing uh you know because that's what they've done for disney you know when uh uh um ron DeSantis in florida has actually gone on the attack against disney uh because they're too woke or whatever um and 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 so it is a little bit surprising to me that starbucks is is just basically saying you know oh yeah daddy schultz yeah we're, we'll do exactly what you want us to do and we will participate in your um in your public pressure campaign against your employees. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project, and you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm. 